Hey everybody, welcome to Bird Tech. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about self-driving cars, the Comma 2, the Comma 3, and my experience with the Comma 2. All right, welcome back. For this video, I want to make sure you like, subscribe. The more likes and subscribers you get, the more content we can make. The reason why you subscribe to this amazing YouTube channel is to get the money-making trends before they go mainstream. So we've all heard of Tesla, and we've all heard of full self-driving. And if you even don't even know what those are, you've probably heard of self-driving cars. This has been something that has been theorized and tried to be implemented for the last 50 years, but it's only been the last maybe 10 where it actually has become feasible. Now the thing about full self-driving memes aside is that it is actually pretty good at what it does and one of these days it's going to come out. When it will come out it's anybody's guess. Now my guess is probably going to be later rather than sooner just because I actually did buy a comma 2 and I'm actually really impressed with it. But I'm not super impressed with it to say that full self-driving is literally right around the corner. So what is a comma 2? Well a comma 2 is a dev kit that you attach to your car and it basically drives drives itself through the process of machine learning. So what happens is that there's a lot of people that drive around and upload that footage to the comma servers and then the people there use machine learning algorithms to make the car better. Now this is actually really cool and the comma 2 is obviously the second iteration over the comma. Now they have just announced the comma 3 which is a lot better and I'm going to get to that immediately. So the comma 2 is the second iteration of the product but the comma 3 has just came out and I'm going to get to that later. So one of the things I was actually really impressed with is that the comma 2 can work on any car that's made after 2015 and I just bought a 2017 Honda CRV, which I absolutely love by the way and I bought it and I said well can I install the comma 2 on it and the answer is yes. Now it was actually fairly difficult to install and I know what I'm doing but I had to kind of move the wire down in a very weird angle and the top part where everything was set up it was a little bit hard to fit everything in there but I did manage to do it and I really like it because once I installed the comma 2 and once you actually get in a car that drives itself it's a mind-blowing experience the car basically went down the road I didn't have to push the gas or the brake or turning and I thought that was really good now one of the things that you probably don't know about cars is that they have a certain torque speed and my particular vehicle doesn't have too much torque which is actually pretty good because the car won't jeer off the road and for any given reason. Now some other cars have bigger torque speed so they can take some bigger turns but the common two can only take so many steep turns and I do have to have my hand on the wheel. So what is the comma 2 really used for? Well the comma 2 is really used for highway driving and stop and go traffic and these are of course incredibly frustrating. So for highway driving if you've ever done an 8 hour or a 16 hour drive you'll know that it is fairly tiring but with the comma 2 especially if you're on a fairly straight road we'll just basically drive for you and it is really awesome it does make driving a lot more chill than if you were to drive by yourself and I don't think I can ever go back from not using a comma 2 or some kind of vehicle assisted device if I ever do get a Tesla I'll probably love the full self-driving but the comma 2 is so good that I don't think you'll need to actually buy a Tesla to order to have a self-driving car so the other thing that you use a comma 2 is stop and go traffic we've all been in rush hour and you got to stop and go and that just takes mental pressure but the comma 2 will do all that for you and it's really good and these are the two situations I use it the most now where does the comma 2 not do as well well it's kind of in the like the last mile so if you've gone on a highway and you need to kind of turn off the highway to get to your residential zone or going to a friend's house or whatever that's where it's not so good the other thing about the comma 2 is that it doesn't have support for traffic lights yet but one of these days it will but as of now as of today it doesn't really have that now I think it's gonna be really good once they do but right now you still have to really drive the car and it's more or less an assist and that's really the whole key to this it's an assist of the driving and it's not technically driving the car by itself I don't think we'll be able to get to mind off level 4 autonomy for a while here and it might be more farther off than most people think but having said that it does make driving a lot easier anytime I'm on a highway I just turn it on and it basically drives itself the longer the more straight highway the better and I can really see this application being used for truck drivers especially in the central of the United States where there's long 
straight roads with very little things that you have to do. You just simply turn it on and you look and it's a lot easier. You basically have to sit there and be aware. Now you do have to be aware in terms of what's going on here. You do have to look and you do have to brake when necessary. There has been a few times where someone has cut in and I did have to brake, but the Comma 2 is actually really good about this. And the other thing about the Comma 2 is that it upgrades and I am absolutely blown away at how good the upgrades are. So I started with version 0.8.4. Now I thought it was pretty impressive then, but then they updated it to 0.8.5 and it was mind-blowingly different. It was a lot better than 0.8.4, as if my mind could have been blown enough, it was blown again. Now, they have the current version, which is 0.8.6, and it is even better than 0.8.5. And so I'm looking for, you know, 0.8.7 or 0.9.0, and I think those are gonna be incredibly good. Now, the thing about machine learning is that the more data that you put into it, the better the system gets. And it has to do with the kind of people at the other end. It's just like a pizza shop. There are some really good pizza joints, and there are really bad pizza joints. It's all about the people making the pizza. And the people at Comma are really good chefs in terms of the machine learning process. They are taking all the data and they're really training it in a very effective way. So as of now, there's only about six to 7,000 Comma 2 sold, which when you think about it, isn't that many, considering that there are a million cars on the road. Now, if we got to maybe 12,000, 20,000, 100,000 Comma 2s, that would be so much data that I could not even imagine how good the system would be if we had that many Comma 2s. The fact that Comma 2 and Comma.ai is so good with so few drivers is absolutely mind-blowing. I can't stress enough how little data that is comparatively to have how good of a product the Comet 2 really is. So the other thing is that all the people, when they're driving without the system engaged, they're sending that footage back to Comma's servers and they are training the model. So what that means is that when you're not using the Comma, you're helping making it better. Now you don't train the model when it's engaged because you're reinforcing the, the same kind of behavior. But what you do do is use the behavior from the drivers that are driving. Now the other thing about the Comma 2 is that it works on a lot of cars. You can buy a low-end Honda Civic and it will still work on that. You can have full self-driving in practically any car made after 2015. And I think this is really interesting. Now, if I were the big automakers, I would absolutely go talk to Comma and I would make sure that my system is super compatible and super easy to work with their system because there's no way that these big automakers are gonna compete with Tesla. I don't think it's gonna happen. So if I was Honda or Toyota or all any of the other Japanese Japanese car companies, I would definitely talk to Kama and make sure that the system works very well together. Now, I don't know if these will be sold in dealerships, but I do know that it is such a good product that the big car companies would be fools not to embrace this because I am so blown away with how Kama 2 works. And if I could get that in like a $20,000 Honda Civic, I think that would be awesome. So let's talk about the Comma 3. Now the Comma 3 has just came out and it's actually quite a bit better than the Comma 2. Now I don't have one because I haven't purchased one yet, but what from what I can see, it's actually really good. It has not only one, but two cameras. And the reason why they have these two cameras is one is for the regular camera and one is to view objects in a far distance. Now probably what they were noticing with the footage that was being uploaded is that there might be a car way off in the distance and they are going to anticipate that car to come in. Now, a lot of things that are really interesting about this is that because they're making a very custom system for you, it does cost quite a bit more. I think it costs several hundred dollars more than the Comma 2, but I think that it's gonna be quite a bit better. The other thing is that there is a camera on the inside which technically looks at your face. And if you're distracted, it will tell you to not be distracted. Now, I think this is really good. However, I installed my Comma 2 a little bit too far to the right and what happened was um, that I get that message a little bit more than I should and it's really a, a little bit annoying but the comma 3 has a nice um, a kind of nice bubble that can see more of the interior so you probably won't get that kind of error with the comma 3 now the comma 3 is really good and I'm looking forward to actually having it and it comes in two editions it comes in the regular and the cross-country edition the cross-country edition has more uh, terabyte uh, and hard drive space and the reason for this is that you can use that as a dash cam. It doubles as a dash cam. 
Now the other thing about the Comet 3 is that it does integrate maps. Now I really hope it's easy to use. For example, I can just push something in my Google Maps, hook it up to my CarPlay, and it will talk to the, uh, the Comet 3. If that doesn't happen and it's an automaker problem, the automaker should 100% do that. If you're listening as an automaker, you should definitely do that because you want this to be as easy as possible. Tesla will eat your lunch. And I think one of the big legacy automakers is definitely going to go under to Tesla. And I hope that's not one of you. So just please listen to that. So I still think the real major kind of push the button, go to your destination kind of park uh, functionality is going to be there eventually. I don't know how quickly it's going to be. It might be a comma three, comma four, comma five, or maybe even a comma six uh, before we actually get there. Now, the integration of maps is interesting because one of the things that I was noticing with the comma two is that there are some limitations. For example, if you're pulling up and you need to kind of look which way to go, if the maps are there, well, it kind of knows where to go. Uh, with with the maps and whatnot. So integrating the maps was a necessary part and adding in those other cameras was also necessary. Now I have a funny feeling that eventually you'll need to have a camera up top uh, that does a kind of 360 here. And I do think that you won't need LiDAR. You'll just need a really good camera. And it's looking like that's the case. Elon Musk was famously quoting that saying LiDAR was a fool's errand. And I would have to agree with him on that. You can do pretty much everything with cameras and cameras are are actually fairly cheap. And the thing about cameras is that the more that are produced, the cheaper they get. So I wouldn't be surprised, and again, this is what automakers should do, is they should put a 360 camera up top, standard on every single model. Make sure that the lowest model, as well to the highest model, has that 360 camera, so that way it can plug in to the comma whatever, whatever version they have. If they do this, then they will have amazing full self-driving capabilities. But I do think you will need some kind of 360 camera up top, even though George Hotz, the guy who founded Comma, doesn't think that's the case. I do think we will need some kind of camera. It would be nice to at least have that data. But as of now, a lot of cars don't have that. But I hopefully the cars in the future will do that. They will put up a 360 camera right up top. You don't really need much else, something that can see 360 around the car. And that way they can make turns. They can do everything that they need to do. They can park, they can do pretty much whatever it needs to do. And comma.ai is so good that you will just be able to install the comma AI with the 360 camera and the regular cameras and you'll have a full self-driving vehicle or at least a vehicle that really does drive itself to most places. Now, I don't think we'll be mined off, which is level four autonomy. What that means is that you can push a button, read a book, and end up at your destination. I think we're a very, very long way away from that. It might even be 10 years before we reach that. And I'm very skeptical if we get to that before this decade is out. But one thing is very clear. I am very optimistic about Comma. Comma is so good that I'm really looking forward to buying the Comma 3, the Comma 4, and the Comma 5 just to see see how it is going to go. Now, of course, they do need to release a version maybe every other year, and this is something that is to be expected. Now, the Comma 3 is a lot more expensive than the Comma 2, so I'm going to wait a little bit before I get it. But once I do, I'll be sure to write a review and review it. All right, so that concludes this video. Would you use a comma too? Would you install in your car? I want to know your comments down below. Remember that this channel doesn't do a Patreon said we sell digital products down below. The more you get from the content that you buy below, the more content we can make. If you really like this channel, you can subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. We release 20 to 60 hours of fresh new content per month every single month. With your help, we can release maybe 100 or 200 or 300 hours per month. We really do know how to do e-learning and every time a person subscribes, we thank them so much because it does help our business go forward and it makes this channel free and awesome. We have a monthly and yearly option. Our goal is to get the 10,000 monthly paid subscribers. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.